Big announcement, big investment from Honda going together with you. It feels like every other month we get together and talk about an investment in Cruise. Yeah, well, our mission is to deploy this technology safely at massive scale and uh, having another partner on board that brings tremendous resources to the equation uh, is another big step in that direction. You know, SoftBank invested two and a quarter billion. Honda's bringing 2.75 billion to the table uh, and a, you know, a huge amount of engineering resources and uh, we're full speed ahead. So when we talked after the SoftBank investment, you said that your goal at least was to have a real autonomous vehicle deployed sometime in calendar year 2019. What does this deal do to that date? Does it move it up at all? Uh, well, that, that remains the goal. We're working as fast as we can to, uh, to get to that point. You know, the, 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 the main gating item to deployment will be whether we're operating at the right level uh, of safety. And as soon as we're at the right level of safety, we'll be ready to deploy. This partnership with Honda um, really accelerates some of the effort that will come after that. And in particular, we're working, going to work together on a jointly developed purpose-built autonomous vehicle, which would be looking to roll out in the sort of next stage of scaling uh, after our initial deployment. You talked earlier about the purpose built. When you say purpose, what is the purpose for autonomous driving? That is to say we won't have a steering wheel? Well, one of the things that... Uh that we are one of the constraints we're now able to release is that we won't have a driver in the car, we won't have driver controls, and so that allows us to set aside you know decades and decades of automotive design, completely reimagine what a car can look like, how it can be used, uh, and how efficient it can be. And so that this is the first time that anyone will be doing that, uh, you know, for a vehicle that's ready to be deployed at massive scale. Dan, you've said you want to do this as quickly as you can, consistent with safety. That is your first goal: is to make sure it's safe. Who will certify that it's safe? And by that I mean what regulatory authorities here in the United States, around the world? Because as I understand, this vehicle that you're going to make jo jointly will be global. Absolutely. Our, our goal is to deploy this technology you know, broadly across the globe. Uh, we will work with and are working with regulators uh, uh, in our home market here and in other key markets around the world to help define uh, what the right parameters are to set that level of safety that we think is so fundamentally important to the deployment decision. And when you talk, for example, the Department of Transportation or NHTSA here in the United States, are there real barriers there? Are they cooperating with you? Are they trying to get this done? Or does it look difficult? Well, I think everybody sees the promise of the technology in terms of being able to make road and also importantly to make transportation more accessible more affordable you know, to, to a wider range of people. And so I think when you step back and think about the real macro benefits that this technology can bring, there's really an obligation on everybody, you know, us as the, uh, as the developer uh, and, and producer of the technology, on regulators and so on, to create a framework and an environment where the technology can be deployed so that all of these benefits can be realized. Uh, Dan, you've said that you get certain benefits from Honda. Certainly capital is one of them. Also geographic reach is another. Uh, take us through the economics just a little bit. In success, in runaway success, how much of the upside are you giving away? Are you at all concerned about that between SoftBank and Honda? Yeah, so Honda's, uh, as I said, bringing $2.75 billion to the table. $750 million of that is in a direct equity investment in Cruise, and in return for that, they're getting about a 5% stake. Um, but they're bringing another $2 billion to the table uh, in conjunction with that in terms of uh, supporting development spend and other uh, financial streams that will accrue to the benefit. Uh, of crews and therefore to the uh, to the overall mission. So um, we think this is a hugely accretive partnership in the broadest possible sense of the term, uh, and will allow us to get to our mission uh, you know and scale more quickly than even before. Dan, give us a sense of what this does to the rest of General Motors. And I looked at the Bloomberg this morning. I think your market cap is around forty six billion dollars. This deal would put crews alone at just under fifteen billion dollars. What is that ratio going to be five years out? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. We'll have to see uh, what happens over time. Uh, we're hoping that uh, all numbers will move in a positive direction and in, in a significant way. Will this new automobile that's, that's uh, produced by the joint venture, I understand General Motors is going to be in the manufacturer, will be sold by Cruise, will be sold by a new joint venture, will be sold individually by Honda and General Motors? Uh, it's actually going to be operated on the cruise network. So uh, uh, the, the, the initial deployment of this uh, will be in a, in a controlled uh, network, controlled environment. The vehicles will be owned and operated on the cruise network. And, and finally, Dan, uh, talk about the geographic reach, because you've mentioned that in the call today. You said part of the advantage of Honda is to expand your geographic reach. How much of that is Japan? How much of that is Western Europe, given the fact that you now no longer hold Opel? 
Too soon to get more specific on that, David, but I think the, the general point, and you've made the observation, is that the, the geographic footprint of Honda and that of General Motors, there's a fair amount of, uh, uh, a fair amount of sort of uh, open space, if you like, there, um, and opportunity that Honda brings to the table for us. More new employees? How many, how many people are going to add to Cruise? Uh, we're growing very, very rapidly um, at Cruise. We're, we're recruiting people, uh, the best talent in the Valley, uh, to come and work uh, on the engineering and on, on other uh, other roles at Cruise. We couldn't be more excited about the people we'll be able to bring on board, You know, the, the rate at which we're attracting talent. Uh, and this is only going to help us in that regard. 